So, uh, let us come back to uh, the concept of channel. Okay. So, what do we mean by channel? That is something we want to discuss. We have already uh, discussed about different forms of channels like uh, let us say if just uh, I list them. One is the wireless channel which is the air media that we know. Another is twisted pair okay, which is uh, means being used for our uh, telephony uh, transmission. You might be aware of this. So, third is coaxial cable. This is being uh, mostly used for uh, broadcasting television uh, signal. This is also something you have seen already. Uh, the fourth part may be optical fiber. This is uh, the latest uh, one which uh, supports huge amount of bandwidth if you are aware. So, the fifth might be satellite channel. so on and so forth. So, there are multiple uh, channels that are communication channels uh, especially that are available. Uh, through all of them actually uh, the mode of transmission is it is electromagnetic wave. Okay. So, for uh, wireless it is it's, uh, it's not guided. Okay. So, uh, it is just uh, radiated electromagnetic wave whereas, for all other cases it is actually guided electromagnetic waves optical fiber it is still electromagnetic wave, but at the visible uh, optical region okay. or uh, let us say the frequency is such that it is called the optical uh, electromagnetic wave. Okay. And uh, so, all of them are mostly uh, electromagnetic wave through that only uh, signal propagates uh, through a channel whichever channel we pick. Now, what channel can do? Let us uh, start discussing about these things. The first thing which a channel can do, uh, let me list out first what are the things that channel does and then we will we'll discuss about them. So, the first thing is channel can introduce noise. This is probably the most important part of communication. Uh, what is noise and how noise affects? Uh, so, a uh, communication engineer must know very well about noise and that is probably the biggest enemy of our uh, means our threat. Okay. So, second part is distortion and the third part is interference. Let us talk about them one by one. So, what is noise? Noise is uh, again what we are doing? We are trying to transmit an electrical signal which is being converted into electromagnetic wave and uh, in the channel what might happen uh, due to different reason. Okay. So, there might be this uh, random electromagnetic waves which can be added to this particular transmitted signal. So, what we generally say uh, channel is if, uh, if we say uh, we characterize the channel as a additive channel. Okay. What do we mean by additive channel? As if it is like a simple adder of signal. So, whichever signal gets uh, means we put as input to this channel, if there are multiple such signals it will just add up those signals. So, suppose I have a signal F 1 T. Okay. So, uh, I am just uh, writing the uh, voltage of that signal and this is the uh, variation with respect to time that uh, this is called the f 1 t function of t. So, suppose this is my uh, signal that has been put into the channel and then if there is another signal that is also uh, being kept or uh, put inside the channel let us say f 2 t. Okay. So, what the channel will do? Channel will simply add these things. So, at every time instance it will take this voltage and this voltage it will add and put things. Okay. So, every time instance if you point wise add these two signal you will get a composite signal which is a typical criteria of a additive channel. <coughs> if the channel is additive we generally say the channel is linear, okay. but there are non-linear channel also where simple addition does not work it might be 
maybe f 1 t plus f 2 t whole square. So, it might it might start creating all the square cube terms. So, the, those are non-linear channels, but here we are just saying our channel is let us say that is one characteristics of the channel that it is a simple additive channel. That means, any signal number of signals present in the channel they will be just means amplitude added or in terms of electromagnetic wave uh, you will see that uh, similar effect. So, that whenever you convert that electro composite electromagnetic wave into a signal it will just be addition of those two signals. Now, what is noise? Noise is inside the channel there are electromagnetic wave which is being generated. It is it might be due to lightning, it might be due to uh, spurious uh, radiation coming from outer space, it might be uh, the uh, radiation uh, other forms of radiation that are generated on earth and uh, being uh, reflected back from the ionosphere whatever it is. There might be multiple uh, random signals which we have no idea because it is generated from elsewhere, we have no idea and this might be generated without our control and this might means be as input in the channel. So, we cannot help it because we are using this channel. So, there will be some spurious signals always being generated or created inside that particular channel. If it is wireless, I have talked about all those examples like uh, electromagnetic radiation from outside and all those things. Even for wired also, it cannot be fully shielded. So, always from outside some electromagnetic radiation can leak in into the channel and it can co-propagate along with my signal. And then definitely if the channel is additive or linear we, sh we should say, then that signal will be added with my signal. This random signal which I have no hand in generating, I have no control in it, it will be anyway generated and added to my signal that is called noise. So, if you see therefore, the noise is just another random signal, I am calling it random because I have no control on it, it can be generated without my knowledge and without my influence. So, that is why it is actually a random source of information for me. So, this particular is always inevitable, it will be present in the channel and it will be added. So, when we say noise, uh, you might be uh, saying okay, if is noise just being uh, added at the channel? Precisely not, noise also can be added at the transmitter because transmitter also will be having some hardware. In the hardware you will have let us say uh, all components, transistor, some uh, resistor uh, and all other components just take the simplest of component let us say register. Whenever my signal it has to be uh, transmitted, so it has to be processed through this hardware. So, it must be passing through a particular register and inside the register what will happen? Even if I suppose I uh, transmit this signal or I pass this signal through the register, it will not be completely suppose I have a resistor through which I am passing this signal this F 1 T whatever it is. Okay. Now, at the output what will happen? See through the resistor I will be actually creating this voltage time varying voltage or this F 1 equivalent to F 1 T and accordingly the current will be flowing. But what will happen? Inside the resistor there are multiple uh, carrier electrons, they are also doing Brownian motion. Due to the Brownian motion they will have random movement. So, what will happen on top of this there will be some random signal which will be added and my output signal will look like this. So, it will almost follow the pattern of my F 1 T original F 1 T, but it will also have this small things added which is just being generated due to the Brownian motion of the uh, carrier electrons. Okay. So, this will be true for any hardware any electronic device we put. So, in transmission or transmitter there will be electronics which will generate this noise in receiver also there will be uh, a hardware which will also generate this noise. So, noise is not just it is one of the uh, means uh, my channel is one of the source as we have discussed, but noise will also be generated at the receiver, noise can also be generated at the source where from I am actually tr uh, starting my transmission. So, everywhere there can be noise, but channel is one of the source of noise. So, that is why whenever we are characterizing channel we need to understand also what should be the noise or what should be uh, how much noise will be added, what is the characteristics of that noise and all those things. Though we have talked about 
it is a random signal i have no knowledge about it how it will vary with time i have no knowledge about it it's not my generated message so i don't know exactly how it will be generated okay so the pattern at which it will be varying that will be completely random that's true okay but i have to still get some characteristics and that will be uh, a major focus of this course how do we characterize noise and in presence of noise how do we combat noise in uh, in the transmitter side as well as the receiver side so that noise does not actually change my voice signal so you have already seen suppose my voice signal looks like this f1t and on that f1t i start putting noise so what will happen the voice signal will be little bit varied and how much it will be varied how much i can tolerate all those things has to be in consideration whenever i'm transmitting and possibly as much i can get rid of that and as much pure f1t i can generate at the receiver that much faithful the communication will be or the communication will have that much clarity okay next is distortion what do we mean by distortion let's try to think about that whenever we talk about a channel generally the channel uh, any form of channel uh, you uh, see the channel will have some low pass effect so that means it can carry frequency up to some value beyond that it will not be able to carry those frequency those frequency will be sup suppressed so that's the low pass characteristic so channel transfer function if we just see it will almost look like this so up to some cut off frequency probably it will be almost carrying uh, means uh, that signal but after that it will be hugely attenuated okay so if this happens suppose our signal has multiple component different frequency component then what will happen some of the frequency component will be actually equivalently carried but some of the frequency com component might get little bit suppressed what's the effect of that you all know about low pass filtering uh, whoever has read little bit on signals and systems so let's say i'm transmitting this kind of signal okay so this is voltage level let's say 0 this is voltage level let's say 5 volt okay so i'm trying to transmit this kind of signal now this is where we'll be later on seeing also that this is where at this edge or this edge or this edge all those high frequency components are there because at a negligible time the voltage level is varying hugely so that actually uh, calls for very high frequency because in a very small amount of time huge amount of voltage change or amplitude change is being happening so high voltage high frequency components are involved in that part this is the part where signal remains almost constant over time so probably not much of high frequency components are there so what happens in a low pass filter those high frequency component will be suppressed so basically as an effect this particular part will be smoothened it cannot really sharply jump because the high frequency component will be suppressed so at the output of the channel if we take the channel as low pass filter what will happen it will look like this almost like charging and discharging of a capacitor because uh, after all that works as a low pass filter so this is what will be happening basically you can see i am trying to transmit something because of the low pass nature of the channel the signal is getting little bit distorted okay not only that as you go along a huge distance there will be also loss associated with the channel because channel might have absorption loss so it will little Uh, take away some of the uh, some of the energy of the electromagnetic wave uh, it uh, it might be due to air uh, means radiation in the air it might go in different direction so at the antenna probably only a portion of that uh, radiated energy will be linked so what will happen if i transmit some amount of energy at the end this will really become very small something like this so my one now will come close to zero because the energy level is getting depleted and also the signal form is getting little bit distorted so this is this is actually the part of distortion that we generally see in the channel due to the low pass effect due to the absorption and attenuation of the channel okay there are other distortion we were talking about 
that we are just assuming we have been assuming that the probably channel is linear okay in a linear channel forget about the noise if no other signals are present my signal only is being carried out if the noise is sufficiently small then my signal will be faithfully only that signal will be carried out through the uh, channel but what might happen if the channel is no longer linear then suppose the channel output we say wt suppose i give input as f1 t and the channel is not a linear one so if it was linear maybe there is a constant term c into f1 t equal b this c is the attenuation so that will attenuate from here to here the signal level okay so let's say c is 0.1 or 0.01 depending on uh, how far your receiver is what kind of uh, absorption or loss uh, or attenuation the particular channel has so depending on that the signal uh, strength will be little lesser but the signal quality will remain the same but instead of that if the channel has non linearity then what will happen ot will be some c1 let's say another constant into f1 t whole square okay it might be if it is just pure quadratic uh, or it might be uh, in quadratic with all other terms let's say c1 f1 t whole square plus c2 f1 t so that's the channel function let's say and c3 if it is like this then what is happening the ot is not proportional to earlier when it was linear it was proportional to f1 t now no longer it is proportional to f1 t so there will be added distortion okay due to this squaring or if you have even higher order uh, non linearity in the channels let's say cube or uh, to the power 4 and all those things then there will be added distortion the signal will look like uh, different because there will be a square term added by some uh, other linear term um, and some constant term so there will be some distortion due to that non linearity of the channel so there are multiple ways that channel can give you distortion one is the low pass filtering effect the second is the distortion itself which can also uh, keep the channel non linear okay uh, due to that non linearity only distortion is coming uh, up and then uh, you have some attenuation which which uh, significantly reduces the energy level of the uh, signal so that's the second part of our discussion what channel can do the third part is which is also inevitable which is called interference so this interference comes when multiple signals are being transmitted simultaneously over the same channel even if we take care very uh, nice care that we have discussed about modulation uh, there will be still some spurious portion of the other signal which comes inside the band of our desired signal and that will create again some uh, some amount of means uh, impurity into your signal because that's a different signal which is uh, now getting superimposed with your signal that will contaminate your signal the pattern of your signal which carries the information actually will not be uh, sustained if that happens so these are the three sources that can contaminate within your channel so you have to be very careful about uh, noise of course you have to be very careful about distortion and uh, that is why we have discussed about the channel so cha you need to characterize the channel you need to know exactly what kind of noise it gives what are the uh, means if it is random what are the uh, stochastic nature of those uh, noise then you need to also know what kind of distortion the channel gives if it has non linearity how what kind of non linearity what are the coefficients of those non linearity so all those things has to be known if it has a low pass filtering effect uh, what's the characteristics of that low pass filter due to that how, what kind of distortion the signal will get and also if it has attenuation how much attenuation it gives so all these things has to be known and then you have to also know if there are other signals which are present what's the effect of the interference these three things should be very clear whenever you are transmitting because eventually what will happen as we have discussed that any signal you transmit so we had this transmitter we had this channel and we had this receiver so this is actually the transmitted signal so transmitted signal may be very nice but what might happen due to the channel i'm just 
taking out uh, the uh, interference and as well as nonlinearity of the channel. So, even if we take out that what will happen after passing it through a channel this particular signal will become like this it will be something like this and on top of that there will be noise added randomly. So, this is actually going to be your received signal and that is why we said transmitted signal and received signal might not look alike they might be completely different. So, this is one fact we have to live with and this is the fact that we need to de deal with mostly in communication that probably our channel will give some distortion some amount of noise interference to the uh, signal and uh, my received signal will not be completely faithful representation of the transmitted signal. So, therefore, what I need to do first of all we need to characterize this how much distortion how much noise will be added and we need to know how to combat this and to get back my original signal because that is the whole purpose of communication at the receiver. So, this is something we will be trying to do in our communication. Okay. So, next what we will start uh, means uh, we will probably do it in the next uh, section of our uh, or next part of next half of our course. Uh, we'll talk about modulation a little bit. So I'm just here, just going through all the models of communication that are required, why they are required, and what kind of things. Very briefly, without giving any details of it, very briefly making you familiarize with these concepts. Once we get some hold of this and we know actually what are the things we need to consider, then we'll actually go into details of each of them. So our next target is that modulation we have already discussed very lightly uh, what modulation is now we'll uh, try to uh, characterize those modulation techniques what are the different modulation techniques that we have how do we actually uh, characterize them so those things we'll discuss a little bit okay so in modulation especially in analog communication we'll be talking about two forms of modulation one is called continuous wave or CW modulation and the other one is pulse modulation. Okay. These are the two most common version of modulation one is called continuous wave modulation the other one is pulse modulation. So, basically whatever example uh, we have given uh, that uh, modulating the amplitude of a carrier or modulating the frequency of the carrier that is actually called the continuous wave modulation. That means, the carrier wave is continuous okay. that means, continuous means it is actually in time if we just go everywhere in time any time instance you define there is some uh, it has a continuity over the time and uh, there is some, some amount of amplitude you will be getting always. Okay. So, that is actually the continuous wave modulation. In pulse modulation what we do we actually take a signal and the signal looks like this it is periodic pulse. So, it is no longer a continuous kind of uh, signal it is just defined over this small duration rest of the duration it has nothing again for a small duration it is defined and that is called the pulse and this is actually a pulse train a periodic pulse that goes around. So, if somehow I can put my information inside this pulse. Okay. Now, what are the criteria that uh, has each of this pulses have few things one is the width of the pulse okay. like for the sinusoidal we were trying to see what are the characteristics or what are the basic features that the sinusoidal have or what what are the main uh, things that sinusoidal have which we can modulate where we can introduce our signal. Okay. Here also we are almost looking like that. So, we are trying to see uh, what are the characteristics basic features of this pulse. So, one is this pulse width another one is this pulse amplitude okay. like the sinusoidal sinusoidal there was a amplitude here pulse also has some amplitude pulse have some width okay so the, this will be in time 
how much uh, millisecond or microsecond is the pulse width. So, that is another thing. And then if the pulse is periodic, I can also vary the position, location of the pulse. So, I can slightly deviate the location of the pulse. So, that is called the position of the pulse. That is also another uh, variability that I can get. So, position, width and amplitude. And for modulation, I can use all three of them. Suppose I need to transmit this signal, let us say this signal okay. and I have pulse strain which are coming like this. So, in pulse amplitude modulation what we will do? We will actually borrow the amplitude and put it at every time instance to this. So, basically the amplitude of this pulse will be modulated or will be mimicking the shape of this signal. So, here the pulse amplitude will be this, here it will be a little bit higher, here it will be something like this. So, that if you just connect the tip of those pulses, you will see this signal being formed. Okay. So, that is actually called the pulse amplitude modulation. So, the pulse amplitude is now being modulated according to your message signal uh, which is uh, let us say f 1 t. Okay. The second part is that I have again this signal right and I have this pulse What I do is I actually modulate the width accordingly almost like frequency. So, as the and what my mechanism of modulating this width is as I increase the amplitude or as I see an increase in the signal amplitude, I actually either increase or decrease the width of this pulse. Okay. So, basically here there will be, um, so there should be a minimal width which is referred to the minimal part of the signal okay. and accordingly I will be varying the width from here to here there will be some scaling of varying the width. So, let us say this is the minimal part, so here the pulse should be of minimal width and then whenever it increases here it is increases slightly, so the pulse should be little bit more here it is increased slightly more, so here the pulse width should be more. The period or the center of this pulse should have the same frequency as this, whatever time it has this time the center of this pulse will have the same time, but the width of the pulse is now getting modulated according to the message signal. So, basically what is happening the pulse is being carried now and there is a characteristics of that pulse which gives us indication about the signal. If you just look through the width of those pulse strain, you will get a view of the signal how it should vary over time. Same thing can be done over the pulse position. So, for pulse position what we do? We have a again a signal and let us say these are the pulses. periodic pulse with same repetition interval and then when we modulate the position. Now, again what we do? We actually vary the position of the pulse. So, from here center I can actually take the pulse here and there and how much I push the pulse on the right or left side that depends on what is the signal strength. So, let us say I always if the signal is positive I go into this direction and let us say my rule is if the signal is any time hitting negative then it goes uh, in this direction. And we say the maximum signal level let us say this and suppose that signal uh, 0 is over here okay. and the minimum signal level which is this that is the maximum right shift or left shift of the pulse. So, let us say that we have decided up to this. So, here the pulse will be maximum 
let us say negative it will be left shifted. So, it should go maximum left shifted. So, that is the center of the pulse left shifted. This pulse because it is little bit less negative. So, it should be less shifted. So, this should be more closer to the center of the pulse and so on. Which one uh, now at this 0 level uh, there is nothing, but this is again let us say this part is positive. So, it should be positive shifted. So, it should be on this side and then this is more positive or let us say this one again it should be positive shifted on this side. So, if you now see the pulses they are now disturbed in position the width remains the same amplitude remains the same just the position of the pulse is getting drifted and that position or location of the pulse now gives us information about what the corresponding signal strength. So, this is another form of modulation. So, we have now uh, dealt with uh, continuous wave modulation. In the continuous wave we have seen that there are two parameters that can be modulated. We have a carrier, we can modulate the amplitude, we have already demonstrated how the amplitude can be modulated. We can modulate the uh, frequency that also we have demonstrated that how the frequency can be modulated. We have taken there a digital or binary signal, uh, but you can as well take this kind of signal again, but we will see the same uh, result. Uh, only there there was abrupt variation of amplitude, here probably gradual variation of amplitude will be happening or gradual variation of frequency will be happening. So, we have amplitude modulation and we have then frequency modulation, but let us say whenever we talk about frequency there is also another term called phase. So, generally uh, any sinusoidal must be represented as a cos omega c t plus some phase theta. Okay. So, basically we have earlier said just omega c t, but there should be some initial phase also, so which is theta. So, we actually have three parameter and accordingly we must have three modulation. One is called amplitude modulation, one is called frequency modulation and f m which you are familiar with and another one is called phase modulation or p m. And similarly for pulse we have three information carrying things which are pulse amplitude modulation that is called PAM, then pulse width modulation p w m and then the last one is pulse position modulation which is called p p m. So, there are three pulse modulation, there are three continuous wave modulation which will be dealing with later on. Right now I have just given a very brief overview of this modulation. We will try to see what the relative merit of uh, them, how do we mathematically uh, realize them, how do we generate them, how do we demodulate them. So, all those things should be part of this course. Uh, so, this is just a brief introduction to this part and we will later on see how uh, these things can be uh, covered later on.